Tom, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, I am Tom Holland. You might recognize me as your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and I am here to tell you that Spidey's back for an all new adventure in Spider-Man No Way Home. I know people say this a lot, but I mean it when I say that you're gonna see things in this movie that you've never ever seen before. I'm talking about pumpkin bombs, sandstorms, the multiverse, which, okay, you might have seen them before, but I promise, not like this and not together. Also, Peter Parker is finally heading off to college and the word is out. So yeah, everyone knows that he is Spider-Man. So throw your fan theories out the window. They're probably not true, or are they? And get ready to see one of the most ambitious films we've ever made. An incredible story with lots of heart, laughter, high-flying action, mind-blowing effects, and some insane villains. No Way Home is the culmination of the Homecoming trilogy and the start of a multiverse of possibilities. Now I have the honor of introducing some legends. Please enjoy this exclusive panel with my dear friends, Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe, and Jamie Foxx, here at CCXP. Whoa! Oh my God. This is amazing. What excited you most about returning to Spider-Man franchise and reprising these iconic roles? Uh, you know what, I was excited knowing Amy for years, man, and knowing what she's done with this franchise, and she was explaining to me it's gonna be hot, you know? And, uh, and I didn't have to be blue and things like that uh, as far as my character's concerned, so you're gonna be a little more hip and whatever like that. And I get a chance to hang out with these... What are you looking at? <laughs> you told me you told me! <laughs> these incredible thespians. But uh, I mean, to, to walk on set, man, and, and to see these guys, I literally like bow to them, and we just been having a ball. Willen, how about you? Willem? You know, when I heard it, I thought, wow, that's pretty nutty. Uh, I got speared pretty good uh, in the first film, uh, but I thought, okay, they can figure out a way to bring me back. Mm. But it was really the pitch. And like Jamie, uh, I know Amy's history. Uh, she walked me through it. And then John, the director, uh, kind of pitched the whole idea before I read a script. And it sounded like uh, a lot of fun and a good solution. And then when we went deeper into it, I like the idea that I was returning to something that was sane but different. It's a return to something I did before with that kind of history, but the spin, there's a spin on it. And that appealed to me. Alfred? Uh, for me, it's just about the money. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, Willem and I were kind of joshing the other day about how 20 years since his green, first Green Goblin, 17 years since my first time as Doc Ock, and these are the longest options that a studio has ever exercised <laughs> on actors. You know, it's like we've been waiting. But it, it's uh, the material, the, the, the pitch was excellent. And I, to be honest, when, when the idea was first suggested, I, my first thought was, hang on, I'm 17 years older, I've got chins, I've got mm. wrinkles, you know, I mean, what, what, you know, what are they going to do? And, and then, of course, you, I suddenly realised, wait a minute, they've got the technology. This isn't, <laughs> this, this isn't going to be a problem. Oh, but it's, it's been very nice to come back to something that is, you know, is familiar, but at the same time completely new, because the, the technology has moved on phenomenally since in the last couple of decades, you know, and so that's, uh, it's kind of still exciting. How did it feel to put the costume back on? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know the truth? <laughs> Nobody knows how uncomfortable Nobody those costumes are. <laughs> but they look good. We are actors. You forget yeah. about the discomfort and, uh, you know, it's part of it. Um, but, but the costumes are much more comfortable than they were before. I remember the initial um, uh, fitting uh, to create the costume for the Green Goblin I stood there for eight hours and they put different uh, preformed pieces on me. Now they scan me and they can design it and then make the costume and then try it on me. Wow. It's a huge leap in the technology and they're more flexible. We can do more things with them. Um, also, I don't know how much we want to fool with uh, spoilers, but- uh, Oh, we love spoilers. That looks a little different. Uh, old sexy. Norman and the Goblin yes. have, uh, are further down the line, and they have a few more tricks up their sleeve. Yes. So it's not an exact. Um, there have been upgrades on the costume, let's say. Alfred, how about you? Yeah, well, the the, the 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 main difference between that film and this one is that the tentacles 
are, are all kind of CG now. They're all kind. Of, they'll all be superimposed on me at a later date. Whereas in the original movie, they were mechanical, and I had them like you know attached to me, and we had puppeteers working them and stuff. So that's the big difference. But it's just a great story. It's a wonderful, and it's a wonderful world to be in. You know, it's it's uh, we're having. You know, if I say so myself, we're having a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Jamie. I'm happy we got a new, new, uh, a brand new star, a brand new, a brand new look. Uh, the, the, the blue uh, when we did it the first time, it was look, look, man, I didn't, I didn't care. I was just happy to be in this wonderful chorus, and it was like you said, it was you know, uh, sort of like two or three hours or whatever like that. But with this, this new, this new, new is it, fly. The homies is like, okay, now, okay, we get you now. You know, when I was blue, they was, they still roll with me. But like, okay, you blue. Uh, but uh, with this one. It, it just feels more comfortable, and I think it feels more uh, t today, modern, like, you know, not trying so hard. Like, I, I, I sort of relate it to R&B. Back in the day, in R&B, you used to have to have fringes on your outfit and, you know, and, and, and like, shoulder pads and things like that. Now, you can just, you can sing, you know? So it's like, now we're just singing. What do you love most about portraying a villain? The, the, the thing about grounded villains is that, and this is what Mark, what's so wonderful about the, the villains in the Marvel universe, if you like, is that so many of them become villains almost reluctantly, almost in spite of themselves. You know, an accident happens or some terrible tragedy and it transforms them. And that's what makes them very playable because it's not just m mustache twirling. There's some real depth to it and that's, that's what makes them interesting. I mean, in a lesser environment, us as villains, we would just be functionaries. Mm -hmm. We would just be there to, you know, get the plot going. Mm -hmm. But here we've got real storylines. We've got back, we, you know, we're, we're, they are real people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's... it's um, Green Goblin has a, a case to state this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. trying to make his case. Mm -hmm. A philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. It's not just about some kind of abstract mm -hmm. muscle twirling yeah. power grab. It's about... Are you suggesting I'm a mustache twirling <laughs> power grab? Now look here, I'm classically trained. <laughs> but now a tricky one. Which villain is the most terrifying? Oh man, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy because, like I said, we've just been watching Willem, and it seems personal. <laughs> because with, uh, because with Electro, it's like Electro and us, it's, it's to the world. The world did me wrong. But when something is personal, and you could go all the way back to Shakespeare, when something is personal and that, that either that jealous thing, there's nothing that could beat that. No matter what costume you put on, no matter what you say. So when he, when he speaks, he has the power. And I think you'll really, I, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being okay, right sweet, It'd be sweet, different sweet, if I was blowing, like here's the thing, but if Sounds I was blowing, good to me. but yeah. here's the thing, but if I was blowing smoke, he'd know it. Yeah. Here's the thing, it's personal. And anytime you can get a character to be personal in the movie, it, it has the most weight, so. CCXP is a fan event. Is there anything you'd like to say to your Brazilian fans? Well, I, I mean, if I may speak purely for myself, I, I think there is at some level, because we're professional people, there is some level where we don't want to let them down. You know, we want to give them something that is going to be worth their while. Um, but the fact that a huge percentage of the audience are comic book fans who know this world, they, they love the, the detail, they love the kind of the inside baseball of it all. I think that's important to us as well because you know we, wanna, we, we don't wanna disappoint that side of the storytelling either. And so I think it's a sort of uh, symbiotic relationship really. You know, they give us the chance to give them what they want. And that's, uh, oh, I can't, I gotta tell you, it's just so much fun. Whoa, thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.